pray this morning. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy, for your grace, your loving kindness. You've made a way out of no way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can stand on your word, Lord God. Help us to get back to the word, back to believing you, Lord God. Back to believe in the report of the Lord, to read your word, Lord God, to nourish our spiritual man, Lord God, that we would be strong in you and the power of your might. In the name of the Lord Jesus, give us new revelation, Lord God. Perfect that which concerneth us. Help our unbelief, Lord, that we will believe you in spite of the news report. Whose report shall we believe? Hallelujah. Your report says I'm healed. Your report says victory. Your report says I am free. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord God. The songwriter said, my name is victory. Hallelujah. Because you got up from the dead. Hallelujah. Because you rose from the dead, Lord God. You are the resurrection and the life. There is nothing too hard for God. Help us to believe you today, Lord God. Be in this service today. Minister to us by the power of your might. Let your yoke, let every yoke be destroyed by the power of your anointing, O God. Help us to look up unto thee. Look unto the hills from which cometh our help. You know what my brother and my sister's going through. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let healing be loose today. Healing from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Healing in all of our bodies, Lord. Healing in our mind, in our spirit, in our emotions. Oh, God, we rebuke the spirit of doubt. We rebuke the spirit of unbelief. We rebuke the spirit of oppression and depression. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke thee in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm going to be free to worship, free to magnify it, free to bless your name at all times. And your praise shall continually be in our mouth, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we invite you into this place have thine own way oh god have thine own way we thank you for our visitors uh, meet them at their point of need you know what they have spiritual need of you know what they have natural need of lord bring us up to that place where we belong now lord we're praying for those in authority we're praying for those in the white house we're praying for our governors our government our our mayor lord in the name of jesus lord we pray for your peace uh, we rebuke the spirits of bondage lord god in the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord God. Help your church to rise up, Lord. Hallelujah. To not stand back, to not be a part of the bickering, but to share the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To tell people how they can be set free, that if God did it for me, surely he will do it for you. Now, Lord, have your way in this place. We pray for our bereaved family, the Jones family. We pray for Sister Carla, Lord God. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in their time of bereavement now, Lord, send a word today. We pray for our bishop. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that has been going forth in this place. Hallelujah. You've been speaking to us because you want to help us. You want us to be delivered. You want us to be strong in you, Lord God. We receive it. Touch our ears to hear, our hearts to receive what the Spirit of the Lord has to say into the church, Lord God, and we'll be victory victorious in you we will have victory in Jesus name we pray amen let's thank the Lord together hallelujah 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 I believe God I believe God in spite of everything I believe God hallelujah 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 it is well with my soul hallelujah in Jesus' name, we pray. Give your neighbor a hug and say, it's well with my soul. Touch somebody else and say, it's well with my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and keep worshiping God. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's a friend. How many of you know he's a friend? Hallelujah. You have a friend in Jesus this morning. Come on and clap your hands, stand with us, hallelujah, and give God some praise. Come on, say this with us, say. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! 
that you are mindful of me, how you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. Who am I, say? Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you hear? That you hear me when I call? When I call. Is it true that, say? Is it true that you are mindful of me? Oh, how you love how me. you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Sing it again, say, Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear that me. You hear me. When I call. When I call. Say, is it true that? Is it true that, that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love how me. you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Sing it again. Say, I am a friend of God. You hear me when I call. When I call. Say, is it true that? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love how me. How you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of. I am a friend of God. Oh, 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 oh. I am a friend of God. Best friend, right? All of us, we all have a best friend. 
the person you can call on, the person you can go to, some of you know you call and tell all your secrets to. I have three best friends. All of them are gifted in their specific skill sets. Right. Hallelujah. But sometimes, even when I call my best friend, they don't answer. They may see the missed call, but they don't, they don't answer right then. They'll call me back later. But with God, he always answers, right? Amen. God is our friend. Hallelujah. And we trust him. And we believe in him. And he'll always answer our call. He will provide for us. He'll look after us. He knows your secrets. Amen. He knows stuff that maybe your best friend in the natural doesn't know. Right? So when we sing this song, we want you to really think about what a friend we have in Jesus. Right? Because that's where all of our sins and greeds go to bear. Come on. I am a friend of God. Come on. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Say it with one loud voice. Say. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. Hallelujah. I am a friend of God. One more time. He calls me friend. Come on, one more time.
Oh, is there 
Now come on, everybody on one accord. Say great things. Great things in store for me. One more time. Come on. Great things. Great things in store for me. Now come on if you believe it. Come on and open up your mouth. Say, God, I thank you for great things. I thank you for the great things. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Hallelujah. And you got to shout like it's already done. Oh, God, you got to praise him like it's already done. We're thanking you in advance. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Yes, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. Pastor Payne said something in the prayer. Victorious. We're victorious in Jesus' name. Because our God doesn't lose ever. So even when you feel like, I don't know, our God doesn't lose ever. Ever. And it's something when you get in sticky situations and you can look back and say, okay, this is tough right now. But if I think back on the power of my God and how amazing and awesome he is, I ain't, ne I ain't never lost. Even when I thought I lost, I, when I kept going and kept living, I, I understood that it was for my good and it was for the better. Amen? Because what we always think is right may not always be right and God knows what's best. Amen? Come on, somebody say victory in Jesus' name. Come on, say it. Say victory in Jesus' name. How many believe that he still has power? Hallelujah. Say yes. He still has power. Say yes. yes. He still has power. He still has power. Come on, say yes. He yes. still has power. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say yes. Say yes. He's still the same God. Hallelujah. Now come on, say yes. He'll prove his glory. Now say yes. My God still reigns. Hallelujah. Yes, he's still the same God. Yes, he'll prove his glory. Oh, yes, our God still reigns. That's the whole song. Yes, he still has power. Yes, yes. He's still the same God, yes, he'll prove his glory to all the doubters, oh God, yes, my God still reigns. Can everybody say that? Come on, say yes. Yeah. Yes. He still has power. He still has power. Say yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's still the same God. He's still the same. you 
shown you already how great I am. I don't have to, I shouldn't have to keep, like you already know I'm gonna bring you out. You already know I'm gonna heal, you already know I'm gonna deliver, you already know that. This is just a test right in through here. Now come on, say, yes, he still has power. Everybody say, yeah. I believe, I believe. He still has power. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. If you know it's true, give him praise right now. Hallelujah. As you grab those hands, go across the aisle. Touch that person and say he's still got it. Tell him he's still God. Amen. Y'all didn't say that like you meant it, but tell him he's still God. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. He's still got power. Lord Jesus, we bless you. Thank you for your word, for your, your hand that's resting on us. We worship you for who you are. 
You're omnipotent. You have all power. Nobody can pull us out of your hand. No one can change what you have planned for us. Nobody can stop your people. We thank you because there's no God beside you. There is no other Savior. There is no one. You're everything to us. And we bless your name. Squeeze those hands. Lord, somebody's on the edge today. Send strength down the line. Touch the grieving family. The grieving families everywhere. Do something special for our, our deacon's family. Uh, Lord, we ask you to have your way. Now, Lord, give us what we need. Strengthen us. Save, heal, deliver. And, Lord, we squeeze a blessing into those hands right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let those hands go. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hug somebody tight and tell them I'm glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody else tight and tell them I'm glad to see you too. Amen. We bless God for all of you. Amen. We bless God for those that are joining us online and on Facebook. We bless God for all of you uh, that are here. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we'll begin to read at verse number 1, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 1. Amen. I, 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 for some reason, in all my years of preaching, I don't recall preaching over here. So... But the Lord dropped something in my spirit, and um, I had to jump over here and find it and, and share it with the, all of us today. Deuteronomy 28, and verse number one. Now... I don't know if the reason I don't hear pages turning is because everybody's got a got it on their phone or their tablet, uh, or that you can't find it. Mm -hmm. uh, Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament, the first five books. It's the fifth book of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Can you holler, I got it. I got it. Oh, see, that's what it is. Y'all got it, y'all. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and 1 reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, blessed shalt thou be in the field, blessed shalt thou shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou be when thou comest in 
and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to, that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Lean on somebody say, they can be scared of you. <clears throat> and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy ground and in the, that, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Hmm. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only. Look at someone say, I'm on top. And thou shalt not be beneath. If thou shalt hearken, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Last verse. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods, to serve them. Can the church say amen? Amen. Lay your hands on your neighbor and say completely blessed. Now say, now say, I'm completely blessed. Give God a hand praise all over the building. Come on, give God some glory. Um, whenever you're dealing with uh, scripture, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, it's very critical that as a teacher or preacher that the word is put into its proper context and setting. And you have to understand um, who the Lord was talking to, what he was saying, and why he said it. Uh, and so... And that's important because sometimes folks, you know, when I was growing up, they had a tendency to snatch a scripture from somewhere and just just go to preaching and hollering, and they didn't really give the understanding of who the Lord was dealing with. Uh, it's important to put it in proper context before we put it into or bring it to where we are today because the word of the Lord is alive. It's quick. The scripture describes it as quick, which means it's alive. And it's, and so it's not, it's a living thing. It's not just something uh, that you threw together. Amen. That was an ancient document, but this is something that is living even now. And it's always relevant. So it's important when you examine the scripture to, to make sure that you understand before we pull out and start hollering about the blessing that we understand very clearly that the Lord was talking to his people. The book of Deuteronomy is really a re-giving of the law, a second law, if you will. That's what the name even means. And so it was a re-giving of the law to a new generation. Very critical that you understand the Lord is going to re-give in this particular setting. He's giving it to a group of people that had not really got it the first time. Not that they were, you know, uh, dull of hearing or couldn't receive it, but what they did was this was a different group of people than the ones that had previously received the law. Uh, all right, uh, I guess I'll do a little teaching right here. It's important for you to grasp the idea and the concept of this was what was about to take place. The Lord was about to take this generation of people into the promised land. 
into a land that they could have gotten into almost immediately after coming out of Egypt. In other words, it would have taken a few days' journey to get where they were going. But sometimes, amen, folks are their own worst enemy. It's quiet in here. Uh, amen. So the Lord, and the reason he did it, and I'll you know, just uh, talk about it just for uh, historical and contextual uh, purposes. Uh, it's important to know that this was a different group. This was a different generation. It was, amen, a word for a new generation. So the Lord had to spend some time in going back over. And so many of the things you saw in Exodus, you were going to have repeated in the book of Deuteronomy because now the Lord was ready to take them to another place. It's in Deuteronomy that you find the Lord even speaking to Moses and saying, you've come past this mountain long enough. You've been around here long enough. Now it's time to move on. That's a word already. Somebody could have shouted in your spirit right there that some of you understand what it's like to be in a place for too long. That you've been somewhere and you've been in the same situation for a long time. So the Lord is saying, it's time now to just move to where I've always wanted you to be. Uh, that's what the Lord's been doing with us this year, is setting us up to move to the next place. So what he did was, he, yes, he, and the reason this was a different generation was because the previous one had been wiped out. Amen. You have to understand, if you were in Bible study a few weeks ago, you remember that we talked about how, amen, folks can bring an evil report and begin to mess you up, amen, completely. Amen. One crazy or false word can begin to make your heart melt. It can make you miss out on what God has promised you. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear me in here. Uh, you say, well, Pastor, give us an example. In the Old Testament, in the, in the book of Numbers, where we were a few weeks ago, you'll find that the Lord said, I want you to send out spies from every tribe. I want to send them out, amen, all, all of them to go into the promised land. It's as if the Lord was saying, I just want you to go and check out what I have for you. I want you to do a walkthrough in the promised land. This is your land. Y'all didn't catch it. This is for you. And could you imagine, amen, God giving you something or saying that he's giving you something and letting you walk in it and you come back, amen, with all kinds of fruit. You look at the land. You spend, it's not just you spent a couple of hours. You spent, amen, a month and 10 days over in this promised land just walking around. Could you imagine? Whatever the big blessing you think the Lord amen, is about to give you or what the Lord has promised you, could you imagine the Lord saying, okay, go ahead, here's a preview. You go ahead and walk in it and go check out what I've got for you. It's a, a land that flows with milk and honey. It's a plenty, it's a good land. This is really great. So everywhere the sole of your feet touch is going to be yours. That's, I'm going to let you check it out. Oh, y'all ain't helping me in here. Amen, you, you got it in your mind now. It's a new house. It's a new whatever. Amen, new car. And the Lord said, here, test drive it. Go ahead and take it for a spin. Check it out. Check out what I got for you. Uh, I, I'm going to give this to you. It's a gift. I mean, it's not the, something you got to earn. You, you got to go in there and possess this land. Oh, God, help me. And you had all these, uh, somebody from every tribe, uh, and 10 of them came back. Now, two of them came back uh, and said, you know what? Amen. This is a good land. Uh, amen. Let's go get it right now. Y'all ain't helping me. But the, for, for that, uh, the negative report had come. Uh, you had people that came back. They had fruit from the land. They, they, uh, the grapes were so big, and there was so much that they had to put it between two of their shoulders to carry it back home. Uh, could you imagine going and seeing, and they, the first thing they said mother hamilton was yeah it is in fact a good land but Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. It, yeah, and, and, and the only thing they said positively was, yes, it is a good land, and yeah, it does flow with milk and honey, which was really saying it's a very fruitful, the ground is very good. This is a great place for us to be. And so he says, uh, as you go to this good land, he said, but, amen, uh, we've seen some things over there that messes, messed us up. And some things over there, they're giants. They're people that are stronger than we are. They went, and the Bible describes it as making the heart of the people melt. Uh, they say we're so negative. That's why the Lord has been telling us for months now, uh, you've got to watch, amen, who you allow in your space. You've got to watch people, amen, that bring you down. You've got to watch people that speak negatively over your life or just put something negative in your spirit. 
You got to guard your eyes. You got to guard your ears. You got to guard your mouth. You got to be careful what you say and who you allow to say stuff to you and who you connect with and who you hang with and who you, well, we just hanging out and have a go. Be careful because there's some people that will have your heart melting, amen, and have you, amen, denying and discouraged. It said the children of Israel stayed up all night long that night, amen, while they were complaining and said there was no, oh, we, we can't do it. And they said to themselves, and here's the worst part, was when they said, amen, we are in comparison to the people of the land like grasshoppers. It's one thing to see that there are great people over there, but when you got God on your side, to you, for you to think of yourself in such a negative light. So the enemy can mess up your self-esteem. He can mess up your mind by a negative report. I'm going to preach in here today. I'm just, I'm trying to give you some background so you'll understand how we got here. And so, amen, they began to complain. They began to say, we ought to go back to Egypt. Why? Why? And all of a sudden, now the people are discouraged. They were so negative. Not that they couldn't even get in the land, but now they said, now God is going to kill us in this land. That now they didn't trust God enough. That after all he had done for them, that God was going to bring them to a place where their children were going to be destroyed, where their wives were going to be destroyed. It angered God to the point where he said, Moses, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wipe out all of these people right now. My anger is kindled against them. I'm going to kill them all right now. I'm going to smite every last one of them, and I'm going to raise you up and take me and Caleb and Joshua and we're going to go ahead and have a brand new people. And the bishop said, the bishop Moses said, you can't do that, Lord, because then the Egyptians are going to hear about it, and they're going to they're gonna tell everybody that you, amen, brought them out, but you didn't have enough to bring them all the way in. It's going to be a bad report about you, that you could not, amen, seal the deal. You couldn't finish. Y'all ain't going to help me. He's going to tell me, and he said, now it's going it's going to be a reproach against you. So the Lord said, all right, I tell you what, I hear what you say, Moses, and I'm not going to kill him today. I'm going to take 40 years and kill them. In other words, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to let them wander around this wilderness until their carcasses fall in this wilderness. And the children that they said, amen, weren't going to be able to go in. He said, I'm taking everybody 20 years old and below, and we're going into this promised land. Y'all are going to help me in here. So who Moses was talking to here was that generation now that had grown up in the wilderness. It took them 40 years for that whole mindset to die out because there is a difference between the Moses mindset and the Joshua generation mindset. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me in here. Uh, the Moses generation is used to having things handed to them. They don't fight for anything. They just get it handed for free. Y'all ain't caught it yet. You've got some neighbor, somebody on your row right now that's got a Moses generation mindset. Uh, they used for the hookup. Amen. That's like, hey, 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 can you hook me up? Can you hook me up? And they don't want to pay for anything. Uh, they just, it's quiet in here. I must have a church full. Uh, amen. Oh, God, help me in here. Uh, amen. It, it's, a, it's a mindset uh, where they always want something for nothing. Uh, they just want you to hand it to them. Uh, I understand what it's like to grow up with the government cheese coming in uh, and the government butter. Amen. I understand. Uh, but after a while, there has to come a point where, amen, even as a child of the Hamilton family, in the Hamilton family, amen, there wasn't no me sitting there, no handout, and I can go over my mother's house today, and I guarantee you I can eat, but at some point, she's going to want to know, now listen, are you working? Are you, are you still pastoring the church? Because at some point, you ought to be able to earn yourself a little money instead of just sitting here for another handout. Uh, the Moses generation folks were handed everything. They wanted food, amen. And I'm going to tell you how you can tell their mindset. When the Lord sent the manna, the first thing some of them tried to do was store up some of it for their family. You know how somebody's giving stuff away for free and then you take extra. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Uh, this, I, this, I got a church. Look down your road real quick. And the one that ain't smiling and shouting, that's the one that always takes extra. Amen. We're giving away free food back there. They give away the coffee cake. And also you got to take three. Why? Why you got to be so greedy? 
The Lord said, no, you got to get this day by day. You got to depend on me every day. You got to make me, let me give you the water. Let me provide for you. He provided for people that did not trust him, that did not believe him. They started dying in droves. They would always come and make God mad, and he smites some of them. At one point, amen, they got to complaining, and he sent poisonous serpents to bite them. He said, well, and Moses, come on, Lord. They're dying out here. They're dropping like flies. He said, all right, put a brace and serpent on a pole and if they get bitten and they look at that they can live the Lord was always making a way for them but here's the Joshua generation y'all gotta catch this the Joshua generation was like look let's go in here and get it amen the Joshua generation was like you know what amen we coming in to possess this land which means we gotta go if we gotta kill you to get it it's God said it's ours y'all got quiet right there if I gotta take you out to get it I'm going to get what God has for me. There's somebody sitting in here right now that you got to get that Joshua mentality. Don't sit around saying, well, I hope he gives it to me. No, God said it's mine and I'm going to take it. Give somebody a high five. Take it by force. Tell them, take it, take it, take it. You want to be healed? Take your healing. You want to be blessed? Take it. You want to have a breakthrough? Take it. In the name of the Lord. He told them, you see, it's, it's the difference between the, the civil rights movement and now. Amen. See, amen. Now, hey, they, they, some of these folks got it twisted. Huh? They're coming out from behind the sheets and all that stuff now. Huh? And they're acting real bold and they're getting talking real reckless. Huh? But understand, this is a different generation. Huh? We ain't all sitting down in a little protest. Huh? And I'll look at somebody and say, you can catch these hands in the name of Jesus. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Y'all ain't talking back to me. Huh? Look at Say, I'm saved, but you can still catch these hands. Amen. I will knock you out in G. Okay, okay, all right. I ain't trying to tell y'all to incite no violence, but I'm just saying I understand there's a different mindset in the young people today than there was 40, 50 years ago. It's another time now, amen. So they got, that's why some of them are getting caught. Amen, some of them are getting caught up in some stuff now. They, they talking all crazy, and calling all kind of names. Watch yourself. Look at some if you ever watch yourself. Hallelujah. But you understand the mindset was different, and it had to be uh, because God was bringing about a change. He was bringing them to a new land. Uh, so he says, but before amen, I let you get in this land, uh, I have to set some rules and regulations. Uh, I want you to understand uh, very clearly that there are laws uh, that you have to go be governed by. Uh, laws about how you worship me. Uh, amen. There's a way that I want you to worship me. Uh, I'm just not taking any kind of thing you throw up here. Uh, you've got to worship me in spirit and in truth. You've got to keep the word of God. I'm giving you some laws, some rules, some regulations, and how you treat one another. There has to be some things, some contingency plans. When you get in trouble and you have to flee, there are cities of refuge that you can run to. And the Lord said, I got it all set up for you. He said, understand, I want you to take these people on over here. Get them prepared, Moses. Amen. Get them ready to go into what I have for them. You can't be crazy. You've got to have order in your life. It's quiet in here now because we don't want to have rules. But see, if we don't have any laws, if we don't have any rules, then we're going to mess this thing up. The Lord told him, listen here. He said, make sure you tell your children that he brought us out of Egypt to bring us into the land. He brought us out with a strong arm. He said, you got to tell Testify to your children because I want you to have a legacy. You're going to have a whole lot going for you. He said, there's going to come a moment when you want a king like other nations going to be round about you. That wasn't a surprise to God. He said, he told him in Deuteronomy, you're going to want a king, but make no mistake about it. You'll get a king, but I'm going to be running this country. I'm going to run in my people. Amen. He ain't going to be in charge. He ain't going to, it's not going to be his horses. It's not going to be all his wealth that gets him what he has. It's going to be the power of God that makes it happen. That's why when God blesses you, don't you dare take any credit for it. Don't you dare take any glory. Don't you give it to nobody else. Say, this was God that did it. Uh, 
Uh, he taught them how to wage war. He taught them how to govern themselves. He gave them all those rules. But then he gets them to, uh, amen, the 27th chapter. And he does something very interesting. He almost begins to have Moses preach uh, illustrated sermons, if you will, is what we call it now. But he had the whole nation uh, gather between two mountains. He said, I want you to gather here because your, your choices are going to be extremely clear. I don't want you to be guessing about what's a blessing and what's a curse. I want you to understand that this is what it's going to take if you're going to have the blessing on you. Wave your hand over your neighbor's head and say, there is a blessing on me. There's a blessing on my life. Amen. You're blessed to be sitting next to me because there is a blessing on me. But here's how you get the blessing. He positioned them and said, Amen. If you go in the 27th chapter, he walked them over to a mountain called the Mount Ebal, where he told them, If you disobey me, if you don't do the keep these laws and these statutes, this is what's going to happen. When you see this stuff starting to happen, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself because now you're looking at a situation where things are not working out in your life. He said, you're going to be cursed in the city. You're going to be cursed in everything you do. He's going to be punished for your disobedience. He gave them that law and the curses were on that mountain. But then he grabbed them up and said, listen, but let's walk over to another mountain. Give your neighbor a high five and say, we're going to the mountain today. In the name of Jesus, we're going to another mountain. He said, let's walk all the way over here. The entire nation gathered at Mount Gerizim. And he began to speak these words to them. And Moses said, and it shall come to pass that if you hearken diligently, if you pay attention and observe to do everything that I gave you a commandment to do, he said, you're going to be blessed all over your life. He said, I'm going to bless you completely, not just in one area, not just in one aspect of your life, but I'll completely drop a blessing on you. Who am I talking to in here? Give your neighbor a high five and say, there's a blessing on me. Amen. Touch somebody else and say, I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. I'm getting ready to have a little church in here. But he told him very clearly, if you just hearken and, uh, and diligently uh, unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh, and observe to do uh, all the commandments which I command this day uh, that he will set thee on high. Uh, the first level of blessing uh, is that God will take you to another level. Oh, let me talk to y'all a minute. Shake somebody's hand and say, I got to go to another level. I'm going to be uh, up above everything. The Lord will raise you up above everybody around you. That's why when you start getting blessed, don't start reaching back down into the old area because God sets you on high. He said, I'm putting you on another level. That's who you're supposed to be, honey. You're on another level. You're at another dimension. You're at another place. You're not like everybody else. He said, I'll sanctify you. Oh, watch it. He said, I'll mouth set thee on high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings. Oh, God, help me. This is what jumped in my spirit. He said, all the blessings will not only come upon you, but they will overtake you. Hallelujah. That's the scripture that got me over in here, Pastor Payne. I said a blessing that's going to overtake me. Amen. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm already blessed, but the blessing is chasing me. I ain't chasing blessings. The blessing is chasing me. Hallelujah. I wish I had somebody in here that understood and weren't afraid to declare and decree that the blessing is after me. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand and say, there's a blessing chasing you. There's healing chasing you. There's deliverance chasing you. There's power chasing you. There's an anointing chasing you. The blessing will overtake. He said, 
the blessing will be on you. It's going to come on you. And it's going to take, it's going to chase you. And it will catch up to you. Look at somebody say, my blessing just ain't caught up with me yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's after you. Maybe I need to slow down. So my blessing will catch up. But the Lord said, I'll speed it up. That's what he's really saying. It'll be behind you. But I'll make it move faster. Grab somebody's hand and say, it's catching up to me. I feel it's catching me. It's after me. And I'm not going to slow down. But it's going to speed up. And the Lord said, I'll speed it up. And here's where he starts itemizing. And he says, I'm going to bless you in every aspect of your life. He said, you'll be blessed if you're living in the city. And you'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed when you come and when you go. He said, he said I'm going to bless the fruit of your womb, your body, and the fruit of your ground. And your cattle will be blessed. Hallelujah. He said, I'll increase, amen, your flocks. I'm going to bless your basket, and I'm going to bless your store. Now, store in the text where he's talking about, I'll bre bless your bread, and I'll bless the dough. When you got it in a kneading bowl. Look at it, I got my hands on it. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't going to help me in here. <laughs> he said, I'll bless what you got in your hand. What you're trying to produce. You got a kneading bowl. If you ever made bread, you got to put all the ingredients together and you got to let it proof for a minute. You work it a little bit, but don't work it too much because it'll be tough. So you work it a little bit and put it in a bowl, cover it, and leave it alone. How many of y'all got something in a bowl covered? And you're leaving it alone. But after it starts to rise a little bit, after it proofs for a little bit, then you go back in there and you begin to work it. Give your neighbor a high five. Huh? Say, work it. Work it. Work it. Spread it out. Work it. Put it where you want it. Work it. He said, put it in your kneading bowl. He said, listen, I'll bless you when you come in and bless you when you go out. He said, now there's going to be some enemies coming. He said, they're going to rise up against you if they come up out at you. Look at us and say, don't trip. Don't lose your cool. Don't flinch. Y'all didn't catch it. The Lord dropped this on me at the end of service in Palmdale. He said, because some of us, the reason we messed up and we haven't gotten where we're supposed to be this year is because we flinched. When the enemy came, we flinched. One of the best things I ever saw, and I saw Kobe Bryant's whole career, and, and I saw some great things. I saw all these plays. But one of the things he did that just blew my mind to this day, he had Matt Barnes. Y'all know Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes, God bless you. I ain't going to say it out loud because you know, he might find me. But anyway, Matt Barnes is, he plays with an edge. And Kobe was defending him down in Orlando. And he was, Matt was taking the ball out of bounds. And what he did was, Kobe's standing there like this. I mean, right in his face. And Matt Barnes took the ball and faked like he was going to throw it in Kobe's face. Kobe stood just like this. Look at us, I said, don't flinch. See, y'all didn't get it. See, my brother Michael, God rest his soul. Mike, when I was walking down the hallway at my mom and dad's house, as a youngster, Mike took every opportunity he could to fire on me. Pow, he hit me right on his shoulder. 
And so after he's done it quite a few times, I would, I'm, I, I would always regret if he was coming down the hall. So sometimes I try to duck back in a room and, you know, act like I'm not walking down the hall because then he'd come find me if I tried that. So I just, like, I got to go ahead and deal with it. So as I'm walking up the hallway, after a while, he wouldn't even have to hit me because I'd flinch. Y'all missed it. And he said, oh, punk, ain't nobody going to hit you. And then he hit me after I flinched. <laughs> but understand, what, he was, what I, I learned was I got to stop flinching and start preparing. You know, I go, help me. I got to be ready for it. And here's what happened to us. Sometime this summer, you flinched. And you got nervous. Because the enemies were coming at you. And stuff looked like it's falling apart around you. But guess what? The Lord told you in the text. He said, if you listen to me, and you're obedient. Y'all didn't catch it. See, that's where we get. See, the clapping ain't going to be that loud. Because now you got to be obedient. In other words, you got to do what he said. He told you what to do last year. And you got disobedient. You got distracted. You flinched. And he said, but the enemy's coming at you one way. But if you stand firm, I got a blessing on you that'll make him run from your seven ways. He came straight at you. But he's going to scatter. They came organized, but they're running scared now. He said, I'll make them fall before you. You ain't got to say a word. Just show up. Look at someone say, show up. Just show up. He said, just look at someone say, just show up and be blessed. He said, they're going to leave seven ways. Then the Lord shall command the blessing <laughs> upon thee and upon thy storehouse or your barns. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land. He's going to establish thee a holy people. He said, and understand, Moses at this point is letting them know, you belong to God. Lift your hands and say, God's property. You belong to God. And in all you're trying to be independent, and I'm, I'm doing me, Make sure you understand that I belong to God. And I'm going to be obedient to what God says. Which means, that here's where it gets tough. And I guess I got to talk to you because you we probably ain't going to shout here. That means that I got to tell myself no. Because see, the problem is, he said, if you're obedient, this is what happens to you. And it's not anything you're working. It's just you doing what God said do. And he's given you the strength and the ability and now the power to do it. Okay, see, I got three people that said amen on that one. God bless you three. Because he said, here, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth, every, and you won't have to make an announcement. You won't have to say anything. Everybody going to know that you're a child of the Most High God. You don't have to get obnoxious. You ain't got to be crazy. You ain't got to post a bunch of stuff. You just got to go ahead and be you. Look at something. Just go ahead and be great. Oh, y'all, let's see. All you got to do is just wake up and be great. And everybody's going to know there's something different about her. There's something different about him. And all of them are going to call. You're going you're gonna to be called by the name of the Lord. And they're going to be afraid of you. That's what's happening right now. Some people can't figure you out and they're scared of you. Because they haven't been able to put their finger on what's your deal. You say, I don't understand why. I can't, they're not tripping like everybody else because I got a God that loves me and has blessed me. But watch this, and I got to close. He says, look, look, he'll make you plenteous in goods and the fruit of your body 
thy cattle, the ground. And then he says, he'll open, the Lord will open his good treasure. He'll open up heaven. That's what it's really said, his good treasure, the heavens. And that's what he told them, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Now, understand this. You say, Pastor, this is really good for the children of Israel. That was marvelous. But understand, there came a point, and the Lord told me this morning. He said, listen, I, Jesus told me, I took him to a mountain too. In the New Testament, Jesus takes his followers to the mountain. He saw the multitude and went up into the mountain. And when he sat down, he said, okay. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord told me, he said, listen, they had to physically move into positions. He said, but now it's not necessarily physical. Now it's spiritual and psychological. He said, I'm wanting them to change their attitude. Oh, God, help me. Uh, no, 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 they missed it. He said, it's going to be now the thing where you're being fought the most is you're stressing out. And he said, if you're poor in spirit or be humble, the kingdom is yours. He said, blessed are, you know, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Wait a minute. So now it's a spiritual mindset. It's an uh, attitude that I have that takes me above everybody else. And I know, see, we ain't going to shout as much on that. But see, th the problem is, here's the thing. The problem is our attitude and how we treat people messes up God dropping or commanding a blessing on us. In other words, if I don't know how to get along with you, I'm going to mess up my blessing. And I ain't messing up no blessing over you. Look at someone say, I ain't going to hell for you. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. I'm, I, am not, I am not losing my blessing for people. And people will get you out of your comfort zone, out of your, uh, get you out of pocket. You, you'll start talking crazy. And they'll make you, here it is, lose focus. What the Lord kept telling them to do was keep focused on me and how I'm dealing with you. He said, but pastor, they, Lord, they're, no, don't worry. Just, just you and me. It's just you and me. Look at somebody, look at somebody go just like this. It's just you and me. Just you, look at me. Y'all see, look at somebody, look at me. I was just about to say, I'm the captain now, but I, I didn't want to go there. But, but look at me. He said, just look, just all I have to do is stay focused on the Lord and not turn. That's what he said, don't turn to the right or to the left. Don't get distracted. Don't get out of your position. Don't get sidetracked by stuff. You have to stay focused. And it's so hard for us because we're so quote unquote connected to everybody. So you I'm connected. I gotta check on and you checking on people and they ain't doing too well. So now you gotta help them. Look at somebody say don't save them. They don't want to be saved. It's like you're on a plane. Put your mask on first. You over here trying to put somebody else's mask on you, trying to catch your breath. You know, that'll hit you when you get home. You about to pass out. <laughs> but he says, listen, he's going to make you the head and not the tail. He said, I'm going to have you so blessed that you'll be lending instead of borrowing. I'll put you on top and never on the bottom. You'll be in front and not behind. He says, listen, if you just listen, they kept coming back, if you just hearken to the commandments. Interestingly enough, as you're standing, 
Jesus gave those blessings. He said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. If you're merciful, you're going to get mercy. If you mourn, you're going to be comforted. He said, all the stuff that happens in your life, he said, I got you covered. When the Lord blesses something, he blesses it, Pastor Gensilla, he blesses it completely. The Lord went down and itemized all the aspects of their life. He said, I'm going to bless you in that. I'm going to bless you in this. I'm going to do it for you completely. And you're saying, Pastor, well, why am I coming up short then? And it's not God's fault. When he wanted to kill all the people, the Lord Moses told him, he said, listen. He said, but Joshua and Caleb, they got another kind of spirit about them. They have an excellent spirit. They don't think like everybody else. And you got to be unafraid to be an individual. Amen. You got to just be able to stand on your own. Just say, you know, just me and Jesus. I don't care. And he ain't going to make you weird. Let me say that. I'm not trying to get you to be spooky. Amen. Because you all know, you know, some of y'all know some of these saints. Walk around with their head all in the clouds, speaking in King James Version. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. No. Oh, you got to. Uh, listen, just, just stop being silly for a moment. Because sometimes you can make some bad. And what he was really doing was setting up choices. He told him later, choose. You know, I've set before you life and death, blessing and curse, good and evil. Choose. Choose life. Choose life. Look at those. I choose to live. That's what I'm choosing. And what he says, I want you to choose the best thing that I have for you. I have it all. It's right there, y'all. And I know some of y'all right now are saying, but my credit, Pastor, you don't, I, I understand your little credit. All of us know what it's like to be broke. And all of us know it way too well. But the Lord said, that's about to change. So you tried it. Oh, watch this. You tried it your way. Are you going to try it his way now? And he tells him, as you grab those hands, he told him, listen, their rock is not our rock. They're not like you. But he told him in the 30th chapter, and Moses is saying, listen, what I'm laying out for you, he said, this ain't, this ain't somewhere far away, all right? For this commandment which I command this day is not hid from, hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Look at us, you already know what God wants. Come on now, no, come on now. We ain't no, let's stop, you know, someone say, stop being silly. I mean, you know, some, and, and I'll be honest with you. I, I, I said it like this in Palmdale. You know, you're too, you're too grown to be silly. Now, what I really should have said was you're too old to be silly. And I was trying to be nice. But you're too old to be silly. All right, I'm going to meddle with you since you all, some of y'all right now. See, you, f folks are so immature. They have turned Halloween into an adult thing. See, I knew, I knew Pastor Payne, I wasn't going to get a whole lot of amens because some of these folks still got the makeup on. From <laughs> I'm a zombie. No, no, you're a nut. That's what you are. <laughs> Just, you, you ever been driving down the street around this time of the year and you look in a car next to you like this, somebody over with a weird costume. I'm like, you look like a clown. You look like an idiot. <laughs> Pastor, we just have fun. But see, you took trick-or-treating. You took the little kids, getting a little mask, 
a little Superman outfit on, and now here you are walking around. I saw a woman uh, last night jump out of the car. No, on my street. I'm going home, and, and, and she's standing there. It looked like she had a Wonder Woman costume on. I'm like, That's y'all like, Pastor, you just killing my buzz. I don't care. I guess I'm just, I gotta stop being silly. Folks couldn't come to church this morning because they were just out, out, out all night. A uh, holiday. It's not a real holiday. What I'm saying is, you know, at some point, you have to act like an adult. You have to act like a mature child of God. It doesn't mean you can't have fun, but let's not be silly. Sometimes you, you know, you wasted too much time. And I don't know about you, but I, don't, I, I just don't want to waste any more time. Squeeze that hand, Father, in the name of Jesus. You told us that the commandment is not far from us. This word is in our mouth. It's in our hearts. We already have it. Lord, help us to think differently, to not flinch, to not worry, to not doubt. Help us, Lord, to speak the right words. The commandment ain't far away in the, in the sky that we've got to have somebody go up and get it. It's not in heaven. It's not in the sea. Somebody's got to go dive down to get it. You told us the word is nigh thee. It's in our mouth. Lord, help us declare what you declared over our lives. Help us say what you say about us. Help us to speak the things that you have spoken into our hearts. We are completely blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. Blessed in our store. Blessed in the basket. Lord, you bless everything, the work of our hands. Lord, if you did it for them, you could do it for us. Lord, you were just showing how you operate. This is how you do for your people that are obedient. Help us stop being disobedient. Lord, you've corrected us enough times now. You've withheld blessings enough. This time we're going to be different. Lord, we come repenting. We come repenting, Lord. Forgive us for our disobedience. Forgive us for being hard-headed. Forgive us for being stubborn. In the name of Jesus, restore our fortunes, Lord. In Jesus' name, save us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise. Come on, put your voice with that hand clap and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Don't stop. Give him glory. All over the building, give him glory. Hallelujah. With a loud voice. If this time is going to be different, give him praise. If this time is going to be better, give him praise. If you're positioned for the blessing, give him glory. Come on, open your mouth. God bless you. God bless you. Ministry team, I need you to come. I need you to come. Hallelujah. Amen. And those of you that need God to help you, get up and come. Get up and come now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's something that's on you now. The thing he told them is to listen. Don't go say, it's not hid from you. It's not in heaven that you should say, who's going to go up to heaven and bring it down to us? You may hear it and do it. It's not in the sea. Who's going to go over the sea to get it for us? 
but the word is very nigh unto thee in your mouth and in thy heart. Paul told the Roman church, he said, listen, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That word is in your mouth. Hallelujah. And you got to change what you speak over your own life. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. Say completely blessed. In Jesus name. You made all things new. Yes you made all things new. And I will follow you forward oh you made all things new yes you made all things new and i will follow you forward oh you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward mm, you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward All things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. Oh, you make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward yeah, yeah, yeah. you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward hallelujah lord you make all things new yes you Make all things new and I will follow you forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you, my Lord, forward. How many know he's making everything new? How many know he's doing a new thing in you? How many know you're going to be completely blessed? Give God glory all over the building. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. 
I believe, is our pool brack ready already? Or no, we just don't, we've gotten water in it. The pool, the map, there's no water in it. All right. Well, we got to get it in there next week because it's ready. Somebody may want to be baptized in Jesus' name. So if you want to be baptized, uh, our refurbished pool is ready. All right. Come on, give God praise. It's uh, refurbished. And we thank, amen, Sister Barbara and Sister Tara for sponsoring that. Y'all didn't say nothing. Amen. Amen. So if you want to be baptized, let us know when you can be baptized next week. Y'all didn't catch that. Y'all can be baptized. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? You know, know, we believe in repentance from dead works, faith toward God. Doctrine of baptisms. Amen. Amen. So you might as well go ahead and get everything God has for you. Amen. All right. Amen. God wants you to be able to live your best life. Um, Real quickly, we want to welcome our new members to the family. We had our Get Connected class last week. And uh, we want to welcome these individuals, LaDonna Knox, (laughs) Sheila Thomas, Anita E. Nash, Sharice Nash, Nakawa Manning, Sharon Kinlaw, Charles Adams, and Kevin Rowe. Come on, give God praise for the new members of our family. Uh, Kevin needs to come to the office. He got a little more paperwork you need to fill out. But now, if your name is not on this list yet and you want to become a member, I've got good news. You can get that process started today. Today. Look at your neighbor and say, today. The day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Uh, I know they're just putting it all, scripture all out of context. But anyway, uh, if you would like to become a member, please come to the membership office over to my right, to your left, and immediately following service, and you can get that paperwork started. We might have to have a new members class again. We're going to have to have another one before the year is out. So we want to get you all signed up and ready to go. Amen. You might as well be a member of the best church in Los Angeles. Amen. Amen. But we, come on, give God a great hand praise for all our new members. Come on, make them feel welcome, y'all. Y'all patty cake. Amen. So we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, tomorrow night at our Palmdale location at 730, our Bible study series is continuing. The best is yet to come. My Lord, the Lord has been doing great things for us. Many of you have been able to catch it online, and uh, we thank God for that. You know, some of you are following, watching Facebook Live and uh, being able to get in on it. Uh, have, hasn't it been a blessing? Anybody been, everybody been, have anybody been blessed? Amen. So uh, tomorrow at our Palmdale location at 730, you can catch it live. And then, of course, on Tuesday at 730, right here in the main sanctuary, you can catch it live there. Or if you can't be here, and I ain't saying if you just don't want to be here. But if you can, oh, Tuesday's Halloween. Oh, Lord, I ain't gonna be, it's going to be me and Carla in here. <laughs> Me, Carl, and Mom, because Mom ain't got no trick-or-treat demon. Come on out of there. Yeah, come on off of that. Yeah, amen. Oh, Lord, I, I just saw that little meme on, we, we, we don't believe that Halloween over in holiness. Listen. Listen. Look at me. One thing my mother wouldn't let me do was dress up like no devil, though. Ain't no devil. <laughs> but anyway, um, but anyway, Tuesday is 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 our Bible study at seven thirty. That's after our seven o'clock prayer, and uh, Tuesday also. You see, then another thing: the Dodger game is going to be Tuesday night, and hopefully, if the Lord they're going to come on home. Yeah, glory! I I feel it. I speak it right now. 
Didn't God come through there last night? My Lord, my God, my God on today. Anyway, all right, it's time for me to go. Um, also, if you have people in uh, Las Vegas, see, it's just so ghetto. You got people, I got people over there. If you have people in your <laughs> family or friends in Las Vegas uh, this weekend, the Northern California District Council is going to be held and they're having a conference instead of a council service. And uh, I'm honored to be one of the uh, presenters. And uh, I'm going to be doing a session on, two sessions on Friday afternoon, uh, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. So if you, if you have some people, uh, Bishop Jones is going to be preaching, I believe. Bishop Noel Jones. Uh, also, Bishop Marvin Sapp is going to be there. So it's going to be a good thing Thursday evening, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, in Las Vegas at Mountaintop Faith. And so uh, if you got some folk over there, tell them, tell them your pastor going to be in town. Uh, I want you all to continue to pray for um, Deacon uh, Julius Jones's family. Uh, Deacon went home to be with the Lord yesterday. And, uh, and I, I, you know, I tell you, there's one person that I know is resting with the Lord. I'm telling you. And uh, I... Uh, um, it's um, uh, I, I know during this when, when, whenever the service is I'm going to have this to say but um, he's the one man that uh, my father-in-law Richard Jones Sister Carla's father uh, that uh, he told me he said Stevie now he's one of the few people that can call me Stevie and get away with it but he said Stevie he said when I get saved I want to get saved like my brother got saved he said I want it like he got it he said because he knew he changed instantly. Y'all ain't going to help me. And he became one of the great deacons in our church, and we thank God for him. So pray for his family. Amen. We bless God for Deacon Eugene Mercer. Amen. Where, where is Deacon? God bless you, sir. We're glad to have you. Amen. Amen. We bless God for you. And also Janelle, Janelle Collins. Janelle, where are you? Where for? God bless you. We're glad to have you. Come on, give both of these folks a wonderful round of applause and make them feel welcome. And um, so glad to see Sister Cora in. Blew on in from the Windy City. Come on in here. Bless God. We're glad to see you. You know, I got to just clown a little bit, you know. But we're glad to see you. I'm like, all right, I like Cora coming on in. Almost made me stop and just go ahead and say something to acknowledge you, but I'm glad to, glad to have you with us. Amen. All uh, right. It's offering time. I believe that's it. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, I got it. I remember this time. Amen. How many of y'all believe what the Lord told you today? I mean, really believe what the Lord told you. Amen. All right, good. Let's stand. It's offering time. All right. Okay. Only one person really understood what I just said. So, It's offering time. I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to leave y'all alone, but... Uh, your offering is about your your offering level is about to change. Amen. Somebody's about to get a job that's been waiting. Oh yeah, doors are about to open. I feel it in my spirit. Put that offering up in the air. Father, bless everybody, both gift and giver. Take it, break it, multiply it back one hundredfold. Bless those that have anything to give, Lord. Let them walk by faith and say, next time I'm going to be a part of it. And Lord, completely bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Wave it and say, I'm blessed in Jesus' name. You're in the hands of the ushers and the deacons. Thank you. We also, if you'd like to give credit card, by cre with credit card, please. See Sister Tatiana or Pastor Jay. And remember, next week, turn your clocks back one hour. Turn your clocks back one hour next week. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. Bless the St. Martin. Bless you, man. Everybody say bless, bless, say bless. Bless, say bless, bless. Oh, 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 say bless, 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 say bless, bless. We're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and for the devil is defeated we are blessed we're blessed in the city we're blessed in the field we're blessed when we come and when we go we cast down every stronghold sickness and poverty must see for the devil is defeated we are blessed late in the midnight God bless you. Have a blessed week, everybody.